Okay, we are recording, so we are, we are we have started. Okay, very good. This is John Schuyler, and uh, uh, bring the meeting to order at uh, ten twenty four. Okay, and I think we have to push off approving the minutes since we don't have a quorum yet. So if we can start then on the. Uh, and I, I think in the future, we probably should move this uh, comments or concerns. Having it right after the minutes is probably too early. Okay. In future future I'll agendas. I will make a note of that um, for the next one. Okay. It's, it's, you're right. It's on there twice, right? Yeah. Well, that's there's a history behind that, but uh, we can probably just have it on there there once. I see um, Martha just joined us. Yes. Oh, good. Hi. Good morning. Ah, we do have we, we have a quorum. And if Hi. Pete gets his sound, we'll, we'll have more than one. Good morning, Martha. <laughs> so we, we, morning. we just, we had all sorts of problems getting on. So we, we just, uh, just uh, opened the meeting like at the most a minute ago. So I'm sorry about that. I, I couldn't find the link. Um, I, <laughs> I didn't know what to search under. So I had to like read all my emails to find the uh, link because I yeah. noticed that the current email said, don't use the link exactly. the agenda. So um, I don't know why, but it didn't come up with SBOA or um, KUZ, yeah. M-I-C-H, the last name. I, I don't know who right. sent it, but I finally found it. So anyway, sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, well, I had the same problem. And I asked that, Frank that I get like, I'm retired and I get about 100 emails a day and, and sorting them and saving them and making sure every link is easily accessible just doesn't work unless we get it again right before the meeting so yeah that's what i'm finding with my clients because i'm doing these with a lot of clients yeah. and um you know i i feel their pain because uh i obviously had a problem today and they can never find it unless it comes like at 9 30 for a 10 o'clock meeting so oh uh <laughs> i think uh, pete's pete can hear he's on Okay. But he, we can't hear him. Uh, Pete, well, if you see. can hear, see if you move your cursor around and you've got the mute on the lower left, we'll show. Uh, I just, you, yeah, Pete, you came in as a, an attendee. I just allowed you to speak. So hopefully. Okay. You can. All right. I'm here now. Excellent. Wonderful. Here okay. Sorry, right, guys. Now, approval of minutes. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any comments, additions, deletions, corrections? Uh, to the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, excuse me, this is Frank Ranelli. I just went before I needed to just remind everyone before you speak, say who, what your state your name every time before you speak, just because we are recording this and that way we'll know who is saying what and we get me if we need to go back over the recording. Thank you. Okay, no comments. Uh, hearing no suggestions or changes. Uh, I'll entertain a uh, motion to accept the minutes for the July 7th meeting. This is Carl Danny Fox, so moved. Or second. I'll second. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any comments? Hearing none. This is Martha Triplett. Um, yes. I was not there, so I would not be voting okay. um, on that. So. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any further abstentions? Good. Going on to old business, we have the status of 2020 legislation. Hey, this is uh, Frank Brunelli. Um, the we have uh, at least I have have submitted and requested that the um, legislation from last year you know, be moved forward again this year. And that I, I haven't gotten confirmation on this because the uh, DCP is still going through everything it needs for the session. So I'm still waiting to get confirmation as to what will be going forward. But um, we will try to make last year's is uh, this year's, I guess, in effect, um, you know, unless there's something really pressing that's, that's new um, from last year. So that would be, as I recall, we had, um, the change that would allow um, candidates who have completed 120 hours of education but have not yet received their degree, would they, they would still be allowed to take the exam. 
Um, you know, they obviously would still need the degree in order to finally get the credential, but when they start taking it, they could go ahead right away. And um, Ms. Arsenal, would you, could you remind me what the second one that we had was? It was, I think it was yours. You're, you're muted. Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but do you remember? It's at the 150 hours. Well, there was the one, there was the 100, was that, okay. When you say second, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, so I don't know which order. Oh, I know, I know, I apologize. You know, I, I know, I do remember what it was. Um, it is the one that uh, allowed, uh, it requ would require licensees and permittees to keep their records for seven years. Oh, yes, okay. Of the clients. And then at the, toward, during the session, the, um, the bill that would, um, allow um, firms to, uh, it, was a, it was the old one that, that the, the board had when they under the Secretary of State's office that didn't go through, that would uh, allow firms, um, and Mr. Niedemeyer, you can chime in because this was yours about, would allow the uh, firms to, um, to make certain um, payments in certain situations. Um, that was added, that was initially not a DCP bill, but it was added to it, so hopefully you know, I'm, I'm trying to work and see if we can include that again th this year and keep it, it with ours. Yeah, Frank, this is Pete Niedemeyer. I, that was just really back in the Secretary of State days trying to get the Connecticut statutes to align with the AICPA rules, right. commissions and contingent fees, so. So anyway, those are the three I've not, I've asked, but not gotten confirmation because it, it looks, I, my understanding is the agency is going through all of its potential legislation for the 2021 session. And um, now they, they need to get something to the um, governor's office by October, or at least late September. So they're, anyway, so I'll, I'll, you know, keep everybody up to date on that as we go. Oh, one quick question, um, Frank, this is John Schuyler. Uh, will, whether the uh, these emergency powers get extended or not have any effect on getting these legislative efforts teed up? I don't know if anybody knows that question. Um, okay. There's a question That's a fair where, answer. Yeah, I mean, I, the you know the which just depends. I, I, I'm guessing there will be some kind of a session next year, even if it's remote um so you know however it's looking it would you know the, the nuts and bolts part of uh, trying to get legislation through would still be uh, present but you know whether that would mean it'd be harder to get things through so less will get through and then who knows what would work i you know I, i'm not sure anybody really knows how that's going to play out thank you That's all. I, that's all I have. And okay, then we'll move on to the status of revisions to regulations. Yeah, unfortunately, this is uh, Frank Manelli again. Um, the unfortunately, nothing has changed since the last meeting. It's still um, with the governor's office. The um, changes that we have, which would include and allow continuous testing, which is the next mm -hmm. item here. That you know, unfortunately, there's nothing changed. Here. I've you know, and NASBA asked contacted me two or three weeks ago, maybe a little more. And at that point I did not have, I, I, that's when I reached out to our regs group and was, you know, found out that nothing had changed yet, unfortunately. Um, so and yeah, so there's no change to the status of the regs. And also, unfortunately, we're not allowing um, continuous exam testing right now. Um, and we're, I, you know, my understanding is we're not the only state yet. I, well, I know for sure South Carolina, because they even said they did went as far as to say we're not even going to try at least at this point, um, but still, um, you know, hopefully we can get that through soon. I mean, I've I've racked my brain for other ways around it, and I just haven't found a legal way to allow mm -hmm. continuous testing without getting those regulations changed. Okay, I note that uh, Bonnie uh, put some notes up on the chat. I don't know whether you want to read them or uh, I think I can, is, 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 can Bonnie speak and we can. I may, yes, I will see where, oops, let me allow her to speak. Oh, 
I can just ask it. Okay, uh, Ms. Story, you, if you can unmute yourself, you, you, why don't you go ahead and come in? Hi, thank you. Sorry, I can't type in chat very well. That was supposed <laughs> to be a question to Frank because the legislators are now saying, leaders, that they're going to take up many of the agency bills that were uh, intended to be taken up during the regular session during a special session in September. Do you know if DCPs are part of that? Because I was under the impression that they were, but that's not because I spoke to a legislative leader directly. I just heard, heard that from another lobbyist. I am not aware of, of that, um, but I, I, I would, I'll make a note to myself to ask our legislative liaison if, if that is the case. And I think they've already scheduled session it's always tentative, you know, depending on uh, whether they can get enough people, but it's scheduled, I believe, for um, next week, the 10th. Okay. Really? All right, I'll, I'll ask Leslie to confirm that as well. Hmm. And I can send it, I can make it, I can, you know, I'll, I'll find out about that and, um, and, 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 but, and, and I'll find out. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think that uh, continuous exam testing has been addressed. Um, yes. Okay. So we, we needn't spend any more time on that. Um, and the extension of CP timing and accommodation late fees relating to the same. Uh, do we need to take any action on that yet? I think we're still covered. I, yes, I we, yes, we are covered. No, we don't need to take action. This is Frank Vernelli speaking. Um, and yes, I, I know there's, yeah, as far as the late fees, that was, we're, I, I, uh, we are, as some of these have come out, we were working with our licensing people to, to about that because they, they're the ones who would handle the, the late fees. And it's, it may be more of a programming thing on our e-licensing system as to how that would work. Um, but we will we'll work with them on that. And if, if there's any need for board action, we will bring it to your attention. Okay, very good. Um, then moving on to new business, uh, CPA evolution. Um, yeah, I included this as I thought we might get, this is Frank Ranelli again, I thought we might get something from the NASBA. I mean, at the last meeting um, we were, I reported that we were going to be getting some kind of a link that the board members could go in and see kind of a demo how it works but have not received anything so i'm not sure if uh, there has I don't, we, um, if there's been any update on that i know that the um there's going to be there, there's it was the preliminary information um language that was necessary is be i think one of the committees right it uh, it nasba uh, approved that and it's it, the, uh, the the UAA language is necessary, so mm -hmm. I think it's moving through the, the NASBA AICPA world. Um, but as far as any need for us to make any kind of input at this point, is, um, in additional anyway, is is not necessary. Okay, I haven't seen anything of any significance. Is there any of the other members on evolution? Well, hearing none, I'll assume nobody's heard anything. Uh, moving on for legislative proposals for 2021. This might not be fast since we nothing's really moving on legislative proposals for 2020. All right. Well, I, I brought this up again because I wasn't clear after the last meeting if we had anything in specific that was that wanted to be that, that people wanted to propose. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. Uh, this is Mark Aronowitz. I'm looking at my notes from the July 7th meeting. And I have here that uh, Bonnie Stewart recommended putting mobility into the legislation. And this is Frank Vanelli. Is that firm mobility? Yes, I believe so. I, I just wrote mobility in my notes. Um, perhaps Bonnie could elaborate on that. Yes, um, it was for mobility. We have individual mobility now. The board had approved seeking firm mobility two years ago. 
And at that time, the legislature was saying anything that cost uh, dollars, even though this was really limited um, in terms of the expense, would not be passed. And it was something that uh, we had started to discuss with legislators last year after the board had said, yes, it's fine to go ahead again. Uh, but the legislative session, as you all know, came to a screeching wow. halt. So. Uh, we would love to see that adopted again because we're one of just a few states that don't have firm mobility currently. Yeah, yeah this is John Schneider. If, if I can interject here, and if somebody please check my facts here, but as I remember, it was rejected the first time because it was alleged to have cost $45,000. And then somebody determined that they made an error in the, in the estimate and it might even make money. I think it should be a regulatory issue, particularly when we're talking only, particularly when we're talking about such minor amounts. But does anybody remember those numbers? Frank had um, been able to get the uh, dollars initially and is actually the person that had indicated. Um, and Frank, I apologize, I don't remember who within DCP had told you that it possibly might make money. But that, I don't believe we had any facts to back up, so we didn't take the possibility that it might make money to the legislature. Hmm. Well, I, this is Frank Ranelli. I mean, I do know we, 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 the question as far as the 45,000, if that was the figure, and it does ring a real distant bell, um, would have come, yeah, we probably uh, just, asked our licensing people what we get from, you know, the, the firms that might be in, impacted on this, the out-of-state firms, um, as far as their fees. Um, but as far as it, that it may, might make money, I, that I do not recall. Okay. Well, I, I seriously doubt it will be taken up uh, this time, but I agree. I, th I think we, it should be submitted if it can be. And we should be consistent with the rest of the nation. Uh, this is Frank. Any other? I, can see, I can see if we can, um, if it's, if we can maybe add it to, to ours. Um, but I know otherwise, I mean, two years ago, that was one that the, uh, the society was, was championing, championing. So, if, you know, hopefully, you know, between the two of us, we can work that through. Well, yeah, it might be the proper answer that the society could champion, and then we would take a position one way or the other. We were late bringing it to you two years ago. So we had missed your deadline. When I say you are, I mean the DCP's deadline for submitting the legislation to the governor's office and OPM, et cetera. So uh, if it could be part of the package, it makes a, a big difference because those take priority with legislators and we definitely would be supportive. If it doesn't get in there, we'll seek that change ourselves. Um, uh, but the preferable way to go, just the way the legislature works, especially with so many new legislators coming in, we have a lot of people that are not seeking reelection. So the turnover at the state capitals except expected to be significant. So having it be an agency bill this year um, would be even uh, more preferential. Okay, I will. Um, I'll contact you on that because I, this is Frank Vanelli. Um, the Alcon because I know they're looking for actual language. So I'll just make sure that we have something yeah. to, to present. Right. Okay. Uh, if there's no other comments on that, if we can move on to case number 2019-12. Uh, Ms. Arsenault. Yes, this is Kat Arsenault. Um, so we received a complaint against a CPA, a solo practitioner located in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, this was last year. In 2018, a consumer had a financial advisor who recommended a CPA. So this consumer went, on, went to the CPA's website to learn more about him. And this CPA's website exhibit, uh, exhibited a sign, you know, free consultation in multiple places. Um, I confirmed this myself. I went on his website and saw the words free consultation. Um, it was displayed several places, including a tab on the top banner of, on the front page. When I clicked on this tab, it brought me to a different web page asking for my email address. Um, I didn't enter my email address, so I don't know where it would have taken me after that. 
but throughout the website, there are there are no limitation, uh, no limitations, and no conditions associated with this free consultation. It just says free consultation throughout. So this consumer called the CPA to set up an appointment um, to confirm. The consumer even asked over the phone when he made the appointment whether the consultation would be free, and the consumer said that the CPA said yes. So the consumer and his wife met with the CPA for an initial consultation. Um, at this meeting, the CPA gave him a quote of 575 to prepare his 2018 federal and state tax returns. Um, during this meeting, the consumer also asked um, the CPA about his future tax liability because he had just recently retired. Um, so sometime after the consumer engaged the CPA to do his 2018 tax returns, the CPA sent the consumer an engagement letter, uh, which confirmed the tax returns engagement. Um, the preparation of the 2018 tax returns was the only service listed in the engagement letter. The letter did not state any other services to be provided or disclose any rates for any services. So the consumer signed and returned the engagement letter. So after the CPA completed the tax return, he billed the consumer for a total of $1,065, comprising of $575 for the 2018 tax returns and $790 for initial consultation, preparation of 2017 tax information for estimate and organizer purposes and related tax discussion minus $300 courtesy. So the consumer was quite shocked to get this bill. And when he asked the CPA about it, the CPA stated that the free consultation was only for half an hour. And in any case, the consumer was given a $300 courtesy credit for the full hour anyway. And then as to the other charge, it was for services outside of the preparation of the returns. So the consumer filed a complaint and we contacted the CPA. Um, he explained to me that the free consultation was his marketing only for web traffic and that the consumer had requested a free consultation through the website. Oh, and that, that if the consumer had requested the consultation through the website, he would have been advised that the free consultation will be only for 30 minutes. But instead, because the consumer was referred by a friend and had set up the consultation by phone, instead of through the website, he was not entitled to that free consultation. And so I asked him, you know, are you saying that you would charge people referred by your friends, but not people who contact you online? And he said, yes, the marketing was only for web traffic. As to the 490 charge, the CPA stated that it was a fee to and I quote, input the consumer's 2017 tax information into his tax program for the 2018 tax projection. So based on the facts, we determined that if the allegations were proven, um, this CPA's actions would violate section 20-280-15C, uh, subsection L of the Connecticut regulations, which prohibits misleading or deceptive advertising because there was no disclosure of any kind on his website that the free consultation would be only for 30 minutes and only if requested online. Um, it was misleading to all consumers because I would have done the same. I don't like to sign things up online. If I saw that, I would have made the call also. And so it was very misleading. Um, we also determined that his action, if proven true, would constitute an unfair and deceptive trade practice, a violation of section 42-110B of the Connecticut General Statutes because he never disclosed that he would charge a consumer to input the information into his tax program so that it could be part of his 2018 organizer. Uh, first of all, this provided no value to the consumer and not a service requested by the consumer. Um, also, if put, if inputting the consumer's tax information to, into his tax program was necessary uh, for the preparation of services, then it should have been included in the quote for the tax preparation service. Instead, you know, he billed what really constitution, constituted hidden fees. So we reached a settlement agreement. Um, the CPA agreed to pay a settlement fee of $1,000 for each of the two violations, um, misleading and deceptive advertisement 
an unfair and untrade, um, unfair and deceptive trade practice for a total of two thousand uh, dollars. The CPA agreed to refund the consumer four hundred ninety dollars, the amount overbilled by him. The CPA agreed to uh, the CPA would be required to revise his website so that the advertisement is no longer misleading or deceptive. Um, our position is that the conditions and limitations of his promotion should be disclosed up front. So if he wanted to offer only 30 minutes free of consultation and only to people requested the appointment online, he can do so, but as long as his website clearly discloses those terms and conditions up front. And the CPA is also required to complete four CPE credits and ethics before the end of the year. And lastly, going forward, he is required to communicate in writing to each new client his hourly rate prior to commencing work. He is encouraged but not required to have an engagement letter for each matter. Um, he agreed to reasonably confine his work to the initial scope of the engagement and to advise the client prospectively if his services are needed beyond the initial scope and get the client's written or verbal consent. And he agreed to keep notes in the client's files of any verbal conversation where the client agreed to increase, increase the scope of the work. So we're submitting this settlement agreement to the board for approval. John, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. That's pretty complete. Do we have any uh, comments? I just had a question about the, uh, this is Martha Triplett speaking. Um, you uh, mentioned um, that he was going to be um, required to take some ethical um, continuing education. Um, are those uh, courses available uh, now routinely? Because I'm just speaking from um, legal background that um, we're not required to do CLE this year um, and there aren't that many courses available. Um, there are some, of course, um, that are being offered, but I'm just curious as to whether um, that that's um, sort of waiver is in effect for CPAs and, and whether or not there would be ethical courses available at this time. I'm not sure what's available, but he agreed to it. So I think he must have found a way. I mean, these are all terms negotiated with him. Well, he can I'm, always I'm, ask for extension you. as well. I, I would suspect the uh, the CPE and ethics is is easily available because it's people are still getting their their certificates and it's required for that. Um, I, I I think he got the most CPE by uh, the the settlement, however. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a very good um, recitation of of all the facts. Thank you for that. It was very yeah. easy to understand. So I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I'll, I'll add, Martha, that. Um, that there should be um, ethics CPE courses available since we're all, all of us, we have to take it every three years and not every, now we don't all have to take it at the same time. So it's always offered every single year for, um, for Connecticut CPAs. So it should be available for him. That's a good okay. point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any further comments? If not, I'll uh, entertain a motion that we uh, approve of the settlement. I'll make that motion. This is Martha Triplett. This is Mark Aronowitz. I'll second the motion. Good. I'm having a motion and seconded. Uh, any comments, concerns? Hearing none, uh, let me go all opposed. Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, makes it easier to record that way. Okay, next. Uh, thank, uh, thank you yes. so much for that. So the next step would be, uh, <laughs> I would need to get it to you for your signature. So I would have to, this is my first time doing the DocuSign way. So I will arrange that later <laughs> with you. The chairman. Okay. Uh, nobody's, have, nobody's working at DCP, are they? Meaning nobody is only you and Frank are the ones that count for me. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. But like, are you saying that you would come by to sign? Well, I could, I could, yeah, I could do that, or I could stop by someplace, or we could do it by mail. Yeah, I don't think it's. Um, 
and this is my first time trying uh, to using the DocuSign, but I understand that it's very easy. Okay, so and I've got a scanner can... that I can send it back with. No, I don't think you need to. That's the point of DocuSign. Oh. I think you just, you oh. know, but I, this... I understand it's easy. This is Mark Aronowitz. I, I've used it about 10 or 15 times. It's very simple. It's, it's almost as simple as just replying to an email. It attaches a signature, which is not your official signature. And in some areas, it'll attach your initials, depending on the size of the document. Uh-huh. Okay. I I'm just not very tech savvy, and I think this is not a form generated online because it's a PDF already signed by the CPA. Mm -hmm. So that's my only hesitation. So I'm just forewarning you, <laughs> you know, it's technical <laughs> issues like that that I'm going to try, but it might take several times going back and forth with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to extension waiver request. This is Frank Rinelli. We actually did not receive any with, for the CPE, um, which I think is due to the fact that we have the extension for the end of the calendar year. Uh, but we did receive actually two candidates asking, having a request. And the first is this Evan de Persia. Um, okay. And he, here is his, um, here, here is his request. My name is Evan de Persia. I'm a staff accountant in Connecticut in the process of taking the CPA exam. I'm asking for an extension for my exam credit that expires December 31st, 2020, previously November 2020. So I presume because of the extension, you get the extra month. I'm aware that exam credit has been extended until 1231, 2020 for expirations between April 1st, 2020 and uh, 1230, 2020. However, I believe this extension is unfair and more favorable for those whose credit expired closer to April. People with credit expiring in April 2020 get an additional seven months approximately to take exams, while those with credit expiring later in the year, like myself, do not get nearly the same extension one month in my case. Not only this, but due to the closing of Prometric test centers and the limitations of the number of test takers allowed in those centers, I was not able to schedule an exam between April and August 28th, as testing availability was and continues to be severely limited. I also anticipate having issues scheduling my next exam sometime in October because testing centers are only allowing a handful of candidates to sit each day and there was no availability for five months this spring. Because of this, mm -hmm. I have lost about five months of my exam credit, unable to schedule or sit. And now my credit is in jeopardy. It is simply unfair to some people to get an additional six to seven months for testing while others are not. I have heard of people recently being granted additional extensions past 1231-2020 date to accommodate for the limitations of the testing centers and the unfairness of the statewide extension. Being a uniform exam, candidates should be given equal opportunities and equal time to pass. Any extension helps greatly. Thank you for your consideration. On his form, he's requesting, well, that's weird. Because um, <laughs> it was said the audit, the extended completion date was November 1st, 2020. I, so I'm not sure if he understood what the, how that works. But anyway, so he, I guess he's not asking for a specific extension time, but he's feeling that, that one month is not enough for him to, to, to um, in, in, well, for him. I need a, a little, uh, summary of what the um, extensions are? I'm not familiar. It's um, for any expirations between April 1st, 2020 and December 30th, 2020, and that is correct, December 30th, um, are extended until December 31st, 2020. And that is based on the NASBA recommendation that the board back in March um, said that it would followed. So anytime NASBA would make a change, then, you know, Connecticut would not have to reconvene. You would just follow what NASBA recommended. And because initially it was only until sometime in the summer. And then there was a, the, the, the follow-up was through December. So it's a three-year um, time period. And the people whose three years expires between April and December 30th are given to December 31st. It's an 18-month um, year and a half time period. Oh, okay. Complete all four exams. 
Well, I can, you know, I, I can, I can understand his 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 point about he's having difficulty because of COVID because exam sites are closed or severely restricted. Um, I think this is little unfair, unfair. It's, you know, other guys got more is a little outre, but, or irrelevant. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think it's something that probably has to be addressed. There's probably other people that are in a position where they're running out of time because they can't get in a testing site. I, I um, sort of, this is Martha Triplett, I, I sort of felt that his point about people's, you know, expiration closer to April was, was valid because um, they've mm. got more, more time to work this out or more time to try to get into a testing center as I saw it. Well, perhaps, but, uh, you know, his... <sighs> The testing centers are closed for everybody, including the other people. I just, I, I think it's valid, but irrelevant. And if he's got an issue that it's just becomes an impossible thing because he doesn't have access to the testing sites, I think that's valid alone. Um, whoop. Carla's binging again. Um, so does he need an extension or should we be thinking about an extension for everybody or I, I would think we might need more information about that. I have no problem giving this gentleman an extension. Yeah, but an extension to how extension to what and how long? I would prefer right. if, he, if he came in if he if he had a if he had his if his request was more solid on how long he would expect the extension. Is he asking for a, right. a seven month extension for himself? Agreed. Agreed. This is Pete. Do we have any um, evidence that what he's saying about the centers not, you know, like are they really not taking that many people? Is it that uh, restricted or I just, to be honest, I haven't heard anything about that up until this point in time. I mean, it, it makes logical sense, but I guess I'm just not. Yeah. Social distancing alone would severely reduce the number of terminals that could be in play. This is Danny. I do find it interesting that the, um, I, I, I know, I find it interesting that he's saying that they can, and I'm not doubting him, that he's having trouble getting um, into testing sites. I'm not sure I agree with, with Pete. I don't, it's a question on how severe is it with through Probatica, but I also question it because my, 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 my wife just went to take an exam for her as a part of her licensing to become a teacher and she had no problem registering this summer and getting a, and getting a spot. So, but then it could be two different testing testings and how, and how they're administering, how they're administrating it. Mm -hmm. So. I, I, I think I feel his point, but this is Danny again. I, I feel his like, again, I feel his points were valid, but then it's, it's what do we, what do we do to accommodate everybody um, going forward? Because once we, if we, are we going to do it a case by case basis or, you know, are we going to break away from NASBA and, and come out with a blanket, come out with a blanket um, exemption for everybody? Mm, that's a uh, good point. This is Kat Arsenal. Um, uh, Mr. Vanelli, do you think uh, it, the next request, it's a blanket request, so it's kind of related? Should we, I, I, you know, I wonder if we should talk about that for mm. consideration together. Okay, I can do that because it is a very, it's the same basic idea, but yeah, hers was more um, a, blanket general, request. a blanket request, right, in general. So let me call that up. Okay, here's the other one that's on the agenda is Colleen Sheridan. And she says, I am a CPA candidate in Connecticut. I have passed the audit exam and my credit is set to expire on um, well, July 13th, 2021. I am writing a request to request a policy change regarding credit extension for all CPA candidates due to the coronavirus pandemic. This virus has impacted all candidates such as myself who have current CPA credits. 
The current extension passed by the board applies to credits expiring between April 1st, 2020 and December 30th, 2020 and extends the credit to December 31st, 2020. While this is of course a better, very generous extension, I do not believe that it is universally fair to all candidates. Currently, some candidates receive an eight month extension, some receive one day, and others such as myself receive no extension at all. This coupled with the fact that there is now an extremely packed testing center schedule due to months where no exams could be offered has left candidates like myself in a very difficult position. I recently took my FAR uh, and was extremely frustrated with the process. I had to log on to the ProMetric scheduler every day for about a week in the hopes that there was an opening at ProMetric, a ProMetric center. When I first tried to book my exam, the closest appointment was over five months out and I would have needed to drive to Massachusetts or New Hampshire to take the exam. Mm -hmm. Seeing as I am subject mm -hmm. to the 18 month window, I did not think that a five month blackout was fair. Eventually, I was able to find an appointment closer to home due to a cancellation, but it was much sooner than I would have wanted, and I did not feel I would have sufficiently sufficient study time. However, I knew that I needed to book the appointment because I did not have any other options. I know several people that had their exams canceled several times by ProMetric when coronavirus restrictions were at their peak, and rescheduling was a nightmare. Although my audit exam schedule a credit did not expire during the peak of coronavirus, I, as well as my fellow candidates, was hugely affected by the pandemic. I firmly believe that the credit extension should be applied to every CPA candidate that has expiring credits. I ask the board to please take this into consideration. These are difficult, mm -hmm. unprecedented times, and I appreciate your attention to this matter. So, so just to uh, update, I did re respond to her. I said that we would present it to the board. In the meantime, I sent her the form um, to, uh, to request for her particular situation. Um, I, you know, it, I didn't say that to her, but I, I wasn't sure about the policy change because, you know, if it resembles too much of a regulation, we might run into, you know, problem there. But I did send her a, the form and I said, if you or anyone in particular that needed an extension for yourself, you can submit it to the board for your particular situation. And I have not heard back um, from her or anyone else. This is Frank Manelli. Hey. One thing, I mean, this surely this is happening nationally. I mean, maybe it's something that you know, we could contact NASBA and see what their input, what they're getting, if they're getting similar requests from other states and if there's any thought of changing their recommendation. This is Mark Aronowitz. Um, both of these candidates bring up good requests. I'm just wondering why we haven't received more. Hmm. Well, people might be waiting until they run out of time. But that's, uh, and, and if that's so, we're going to be deluged at some point. Yeah. Um, well, I hate to admit it, this is Martha, but I would probably, you know, not think about it until I was, you know, running out of time. It might be on my calendar and I wouldn't anticipate, oh, there could be problems six months, you know, in the future and try to deal with it in advance. So I can see how that they might wait. Yeah, I, I, I. You know, maybe not get too ahead of myself. So I'd, I'd be inclined to be very generous with with these situations, but I think we might want to wait and see what's going to happen all over and understand that there will be a bunch of people falling through the cracks too, but they'll have to deal with it. This is Carla. Um, the first person uh, who's... Uh, situation we considered it sounds like at this point he doesn't have a lot of time before it runs out and so i i think we need to do something and maybe i think contacting NASPA sounds good to see what they're thinking but i uh, we're not having another meeting until no november right so I think we need to really pay attention to this in the, in the short term. Mm -hmm. Well, can you think of anything we can do?
do immediately for this, uh, Mr. De Persia? Well, we could give him, can we give him an extension personally while we're looking into the matter overall? We could. What's going on? This is Martha. I wouldn't have a problem with that I, because, you know, his timing. Well, any suggestions for what extension we can proactively give him? I, I, my, my thought, my thoughts are if, if he was, if he was indicating that individuals from with the, with their first, with their first, who, ex, who have their, who has their, their time expires in April and they get extended until December. That's mm -hmm. what, eight months? Mm -hmm. Give him the same thing. That's a good idea. This is Martha. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, do we have a motion to do that? So I'll, I'll make a motion to extend the, 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 the first request um, by an additional eight months from November, from his expiration date of November, 2020. Oh, I'm sorry, and this is Danny, this is Danny yes. Lyon. Okay, uh, do we have any, uh, do we have a second? Pearl of Fox second. Okay. Um, we have a motion on the table in a second. Any comments or discussion at this time? This is you know, is that going to set a precedent or, you know, I mean, are we then we locked in for eight months for everybody? Possibly. I guess I would just be concerned that, you know, in a couple of weeks, NASMA comes up with a six month extension or something like that. And I don't know. Well, I, I still look at it as it's going to be, even if NASBA comes up with a six month extension, we're going to end up on a case by case basis with individuals um, anyway. Okay. That's just, that's just my feeling because I, I almost look at it as no different than our, you know, our regular deadline. Okay. Any further comments, discussion? Hearing none, any opposed? Abstentions? All in favor, aye. 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 Okay, we have, okay, uh, Colleen Sheridan, we didn't, is, we did not have to address her yet? Well, that was the request for the blanket extension, so. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, when you, if you, did you send out the form already, uh, Ms. Arsenault? <laughs> Kat? Yes, I did. Um, okay. And she has not written back. Okay. Thanks. There's no sense in suggesting addition to the cover letter. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, do we have any, uh, any further new business that anybody has? We do. I'm sorry. This is Frank Brunelli. Um, and I can obviously wait for it in case anybody else does, but we, uh, we do have a matter that we just want to bring to the board's attention and get some input if we could. Okay. Uh, let me just call it up here. Nope. Okay. And we received a notice or an email from the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales about a Connecticut licensee mm -hmm. who works for a um, Connecticut uh, um, permitted firm. Um, and he did some work on an audit report um, for a um, United Kingdom subsidiary of a U.S. entity. Mm. Um, it was the, it, 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 it was the financial <coughs> and the person is, you know, is a CPA in, a, in the, this, we were being in the email. So this person is a CPA and AI with the, well, with us, um, therefore not a member of the ICAEW, which is the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales. And, um, is the audit of the UK entity appears to have been completed in the U S but the entity was, has filed financial statements in the UK. 
and this gentleman is not eligible to approve the audit report of a UK entity per, um, must be the uh, Companies Act 2006 requirements in the UK. And this person says, we do not know if there was any intention or awareness of that the audited accounts could, uh, would be filed with the UK authorities as the audit was conducted under US um, gas. However, we thought mm -hmm. we should bring the matter to your attention and so we are just trying, is there, they want to know what our next steps are. So I guess our first next step, we just ask, is there a potential issue here? Should we, are there additional questions that we need to ask either of the um, ICAEW or of the person in question? And what, you know, just being lawyers and not um, auditors, just we're wondering what we should be, you know, doing next. So just to chime in um, on Frank, um, I did some research and it doesn't seem like Connecticut laws really address this issue, but I tried to research the AI, uh, the NASPA rules and the model rules and it just so massive. <laughs> and when it comes to auditing, I even chatted with someone there at AICPA and when it comes to auditing and in foreign country, it just, you know, it's beyond my capability to do in a short time. I'm too separated for it. Um, but but uh, yeah, could we could we have that and things like that in in, in writing in advance in the future? Because sure. I sometimes have trouble <laughs> I could. grasping the whole thing without, you know, being able to think a bit about it. Right, we could because you know, the issue we would have is potentially, you know, if, if we did ha have to open an investigation, it could come in front of you. But I guess we could scrub, you know, names and all, and, and just make it a ge generic question. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yes. yes. Yeah. Just, yeah. you know, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, that's that's fair. Absolutely. Because um, I'd like a little time with that one. So why don't we uh, put in writing? and send it to you and we can um, discuss, oh no, I was thinking of discussing in the next meeting, but that's not for another two months. Well, if there's something that's critical, we can schedule something in between. Right, and, and we're looking, we're not looking for, we're, we're, maybe not make it a board meeting, right? And just, because we're just looking for input. Right. Because that was the other question that we had, Ms. Arsenal, right? Who might, who of you might be the best one just to bounce this off of individually and we could just do it that way not make it a full the full board in, the, in a board meeting so you're just you know that may be we understand not everybody on the board has the expertise in this area so maybe there might be someone who could you know again we could scrub it and just ask a general question and go back and forth on that okay or just you know leave everything in but individual firm names and there's probably an answer out there. Oh, surely, yeah, when, did, surely when, did, when did Tim join us? I see he's on the board on, oh, yeah. on the, on the, this is Martha. It looks, I think it was about 10 or 15 yeah. minutes ago. Oh, I, I did. But is Sorry, he there guys. now? Oh, I, I, snuck, <laughs> I snuck in. <laughs> Yeah, you'd probably have some quick resources you could uh, bounce that off too. Yeah, um, I can. and I know a few few people if I can't figure it out, but okay, I I, I uh, I'm not going to blow the eight after just, I could look at it too. Yeah, just not having kept up with the the verbal. Okay. Right, thank you. We will afford it then. We will, yes, we'll, please. If you, we'll send something to Mr. Schuyler, Mr. Egan, and Mr. Niedemeyer. We can do that. Perfect. Too. Very okay. good. Thank you. Okay. Any other new business any of the board members might have? I can't believe you referred to yourselves as just attorneys, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, comments or concerns of any person present today, and I believe the only person present today is, is Bonnie, so. I don't have anything else, thank you. Okay. Very good. 
So in that case, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll motion that we adjourn. This is Tim. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second, this is Martha Triplett. Thank you, motion second, no discussion on motion to adjourn. So all in favor, aye. 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 Good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, and hopefully next time will go more smoothly. Well, it'll it'll it'll, it'll start clicking right before we can finally stop this stuff. Right. <laughs> well, next time I won't be I won't be the host, so we know it'll be I, better. Ah. Um, if you could just um, please send out, even if you've sent the link out, you know, a week yeah. or two in advance, just send it out be, right before the meeting. That would be really good if that's right. possible. And um, not one wow. with a link, and not one with a link that says use the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy that you're using Zoom instead of Teams. Teams is kind of a disaster for me. Maybe I'm the only person, but thank you for going yeah. to Zoom. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. All right. Have a great day, guys. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.